Today I'm just going to share with you what we did at our facility and we implemented a titration method change. The slide that everyone's used to seeing now. Uh, these are my disclosures. All right, so three main things that I'd love to discuss with you today. The first is just a brief overview of understanding some of those benefits and why we chose to start doing automated gel titers at our facility. I won't go into a ton of detail because we've heard a lot of benefits already, but we'll briefly touch on why we chose it. Um, the second is how we created a validation plan. And the third is how we actually went through with implementing this titration method change. So just a little bit of background so you know where we're coming from and what we did at our facility. Um, the top one there is uh, Florida Hospital Orlando where I work. It's a facility that's uh, over 2,000 beds. Um, we are kind of a tertiary facility there um, and we're the reference facility for all of these other um, hospitals that you see down below. So we have an additional um, six other facilities, six other hospitals, and two standalone EDs. So anytime they have any antibodies that need to be worked up or things like antibody titers, they get sent over to Florida Hospital Orlando. So we're gonna talk a little bit about some of those benefits and why we chose to actually go with automated gel titers. You can see on that far uh, left-hand side there is a brief overview of our manual tube. Um, like we discussed in our other presentations, uh, subjective grading really depends on um, the technologists and how hard they're shaking those test tubes and um, not very stable reaction-wise. So as soon as they're taken out of those centrifuges in, in red, there's no second technologist coming behind them and rereading or anything like that. Um, you can see in that middle column there is our manual gel. Uh, so when we switch over to manual gel, we have a lot more stable reaction, uh, something that if you needed a second opinion, somebody can come behind you and still look at those reactions. Um, so no actual technologist needing to shake off that agglutination at the bottom. But of course, we're still talking about um, manual technique. So we still have that same issue with uh, technologists needing to perform a serial dilution. Um, and then on our far right-hand column, you can see our automated gel. Um, and automated gel, uh, no manual testing is required. So this is both a huge time saver as well as a, a bit, a ability to consistently produce results. So with the vision analyzer actually performing those serial dilutions. Um, and then just one added plus with any automated methodology is that you have the ability to do positive sample identification. So as long as um, we've labeled the sample appropriately, once it's placed on board, there's no uh, human interaction with ensuring that we pulled from that same test tube. So at Florida Hospital Orlando, our previous uh, primary titration method was two, and our backup method was manual gel. Um, but once we received our vision analyzers and kind of went over those benefits, we decided that we wanted to switch over to our primary method being automated um, gel methodology on our vision analyzers. Um, and we received three different vision analyzers, so we had to come up with a validation plan on how we were gonna get those going. And so with any new methodology that's implemented, whether it's in chemistry or in the blood bank, um, you have to consider how you're gonna validate that method and prove that you have reliable test results. So the first thing that we wanted to do is we consulted our references. Um, and Dr. Cooling went over this in some detail, but per AABB, their recommended method is the saline tube anti-human globulin testing, uh, 37 degree incubation for 60 minutes. And then they do mention that different methodologies may have different results. So that's something that we definitely wanted to evaluate during our validation study. Uh, and so we wanted to make sure that they, we had reproducible, consistent results, um, and that our, uh, we did a comparison with our primary method, which was tube methodology, and we did it compared to our new method on our vision analyzers. And so here is just a brief outlier of how we actually did our validation testing. Uh, you can see that first row there, we used our Vision One analyzer and had five different specimen samples uh, that we ran both in our primary method, which was manual two, and we ran on that automated gel vision analyzer. Um, and then again, on our second one, we did the same exact testing, but using our second analyzer, and again on our third analyzer. You can see at the bottom there, we did a method correlation at the end as well. And that's where we pulled uh, three different specimens and we ran them on all of the different available titration methods that we had at our facility. So we ran them both in manual tube, manual gel, and on all three of our vision platforms. So after actually performing the testing, which we did have multiple technologists um, perform the testing as well, um, we compiled all of our validation results. 
Uh, you could see these are the results from our Vision 1 analyzer. Um, we had our five different antibodies that we titered. And if you look at this first row here with that anti-E, you can see we had a manual tube result of eight and an automated gel result of 64. And so then we kind of just calculated a difference between them and we said that this was a threefold difference there. Um, that highlighted text on all of these uh, next couple slides that you'll see represents what would be considered a critical titer um, if it was performed using the AABB's recommended method of saline anti-human globulin testing. So it just gives you a nice visual comparison to where if you had kept the critical titer level the same, um, what would be considered critical um, in tube method might not be the same for gel method. So the second one here, again, very similar to the other slide, showing those five specimens that we ran on our vision number two analyzer. Uh, again, kind of seeing some of those differences with reactivity. And our third vision analyzer. This slide here shows the method comparison that we did with those uh, three specimens um, and kind of just gives us a nice um, outline of the, all of the reactions that we had with both our uh, manual tube, manual gel, and our three vision analyzers. And so after we did all of our testing, we compiled all of our results, and we did recognize that there was um, a difference between our tube methodology and our gel methodology, which is something that we did expect to see. And we calculated just an average difference, which um, was 1.27 fold for us. Um, and so we did realize that we do have an increase of reactivity now, um, but we did still decide to move forward with the implementation for a lot of those benefits that we discussed and really just being able to standardize those serial dilutions on our analyzers. So now that we knew that we were gonna have a different uh, reaction and endpoint result, we wanted to come up with a way of how we would actually implement going forward with these titers. We performed our validation, but how are we gonna let clinicians know that they might be seeing some differing results? So the first thing that we did touch on is we, again, went to our research and uh, looked at critical titers. Um, and we know that this is used to help clinicians identify if a baby might be at risk for a hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn. At Florida Hospital Orlando, we did not set specific critical titer values, and we didn't do this for tube methodology either. And at your facility, you may choose to set a specific critical titer value. Um, instead, we kind of left it up to the clinicians on their interpretation, but we did two things to make sure that they could uh, successfully interpret those results. Um, one, we did some procedure updates and looked at how we were doing our actual testing. And two is we did physician education. So with our procedure updates, we wanted to make sure that we did two different things. The first is that we made sure we performed all of our titers in parallel, which is just really something to help with our standard of care. Um, this helps our clinicians really see a comparability between those two results too. Um, so we got our first specimen, we would run our titer, um, result that out, and then we would freeze that specimen. So upon receiving a second specimen, we would then unfreeze that specimen and we ran them in parallel. And so really that gave the clinician an easy way to tell if the titer was actually increasing in strength or not, rather just seeing a single result. And two is that we wanted to make sure we did our titers in the same methodology. And so during our transition from moving to our primary method of tube to gel, we really wanted to make sure that there wasn't any discrepancies with throwing in a mixture of seeing the original result in tube and then the second specimen done in gel. So what we did is we did the same methodology for that pregnancy on our patients and to just try to let it um, be consistent for those physicians to see those results. And really, we just wanted to standardize so they could do an a even comparison. So we didn't run one in tube and one in gel and result them at the same time. And then next, and probably one of the most important, anytime you have a new method change where the physicians might be seeing um, some of those differing results, is that um, we did some physician education. And our pathologist and medical director went to um, a committee meeting and presented um, just a brief overlay of what we did for our validation and some of those increase in reactivity results that they might be seeing. Um, and then also just some other things that you can do. Not everyone obviously can attend your committee meeting, um, but if you wanna do like an educational newsletter or just some way that you can get that word out to your physicians. So just a brief conclusion, um, automated titers can help improve with consistency of results. Um, and with any new method, um, a validation is required for that. And then going forward with the implementation of that methodology, you should make sure that we include physician education and possibly review some of your procedures. Okay, thank you. Thank you.